Hey everyone and welcome to today's Take Heart. I remember when I read the book of Acts being confused. And the reason I was confused is because I loved all the miracles that was happening. I loved the way that the gospel just rippled out. Um, you know, this unstoppable spread of the kingdom of God from Jerusalem across the rest of the Mediterranean world. What confused me were, was that the disciples were the people that I just read about in the gospels. And they didn't seem to be very impressive when I met them in the gospels. Then I read about them in the book of Acts and they're seeing all these incredible, for want of a better word, results. And my question was, how, are these, how is this bunch of people managing to get these kind of results? Uh, it would be a bit like if you told me that Scunthorpe United had just beaten Barcelona 10-0. My question would be, how has that team got this result? In the same way, in the Gospels, the disciples give in to fear all the time. Uh, Jesus, you know, in his hour of need, he finds them all running away, apart from Peter, who stays around long enough to pretend he's never met him before. Then you've got the fact the disciples don't understand so much of what Jesus is saying in the Gospels. They just don't get it. And then on all sorts of occasions, they let themselves down by suggesting they should burn Samaritans and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. And then in the book of Acts, not only do they understand Jesus' teaching, they're actually explaining it to other people. And then when their lives are threatened, rather than withdrawing and being cowed, they preach the gospel with ever-increasing boldness. How has this team got these results? The answer is the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the way it's worked, and this is the way it has always worked since the first followers of Jesus, is that God doesn't use people who are sorted, who have got it all together. He uses weak, broken, ordinary people, people just like us, he fills us with his power and then we go out and we do it as a team with him. When I began to understand this, the next thing that I was asking God for then is, okay, I need some power. You know what about you, but I feel like I need a lot more power than the power that I've already got. So I would, I would approach God and say, give me power to be an effective Christian for you. And I don't think that's a bad prayer to pray. But I'm just not sure I quite understood what it meant to receive more of the Holy Spirit. In my head, what it looked like was becoming like a Christian version of one of the Avenger characters, where I would become this Christian superhero with no fear. I never got afraid and I would wink at people over the road and they would give their lives to Jesus in the moment. And um, I've realised that that's not at all how it works and it's not at all what it, what it looks like. My approach was, was this, it was, I've got to get more power so I can use the power for my will. The, uh, there's a guy called Watchman Nee who's written this classic book called The Normal Christian Life that I'd really recommend if you haven't read it, having a look at it. But in The Normal Christian Life, he talks about this particular part of China where uh, these guys took the gospel and they had to translate the gospel into the local dialect. And they had a word for father, they had a word for son, but they couldn't come up with a word for the Holy Spirit. And the principle in translation is that if you can't come up with an exact one, you come up with the nearest equivalent. And they ended up calling the Holy Spirit the resident boss. I love that, because what it means is there was in a particular part of the world, a time when the Trinity was known as the father, the son, and the resident boss. Now, when we understand that, what we get is that when the Spirit comes into our lives, he comes as Lord. Uh, he comes to lead us and to command us. And so it's not the case that when we're asking for more of the Spirit, what we're asking for is, I've got to get more power so I can use the power for my will. No, what we're doing is we're surrendering to a person. So it's less, I've got to get more so I can use this. And instead what it is, 
is I want to give you more of myself so that you might use me for your will. It's less about getting a power and it's more about being overwhelmed by a person who happens to be the God of love. Uh, another way of putting it is it's less about having the spirit and it's more about the spirit having us. The key to quote unquote power is surrender. It's giving him more of ourselves. And so really practically what that might look like for us in our lives today and during this season is us saying to him again and again, maybe at the beginning of each day, you are the boss. You're the resident boss. I want to go where you send me. Show me today, Lord, who I can bless. What we'll find as we do that in partnership with the Holy Spirit is we do become more effective. We'll still do it in weakness. We'll still feel, I'm sure, more human and more fragile than we'd like to. But we will find ourselves increasingly effective because we're doing it in partnership with the Spirit.